Okay, hi everybody. So I want to take a look at some of the NMR questions on the midterm. So the first video is going to be the multiple choice. Uh, there were two spectra problems uh, that you had to look at. One was number 10 and there were three different questions. So I'll look at all three. Let's take a look at the questions. So the first one that you may have gotten uh, is the spectra. Uh, and we take a look at this. Each one of these three questions has something in the NMR that should scream out at you. So let's take a look at what screams out at us on this one. And, and in fact, there's a couple of things that, that should scream out at you. Oops, going the wrong way. I just want to zoom in on this spectrum, okay? So what screams out at me on here is a couple of things. Number one, I got something out here way out in an outlying region at 11 ppms. So that screams at me. I'm going to take a look at the chemical shift tables in just a second. You should each find the chemical shift tables that work for you. Okay. The other thing that screams out to me is I have protons here. And this is one you should always know. This is the aromatic region. This means I have an aromatic ring, a, a phenyl ring. Okay. Another thing is I have four protons in there. So there's two substituents on the phenyl ring because there's only four protons on there. Now that's in each of my options, except for this one. So right away, I can eliminate this one because that should have five protons in the aromatic region. So there, I can already get rid of one. Uh, the other thing that screams me in this thing is that in this aromatic region, I have two signals. That means there must be some symmetry because I only have two signals. And each of these is a doublet that may be a little bit hard to tell here, but we can take a look down here. And if it's a doublet and I only have two, that means there must be some symmetry. This, the protons here and the protons here are the same and same with these. So this will only give me two signals as will this. Pair of substituted rings will give you two signals and it will give me two doublets. So that coincides with that. Over here, because I have two different groups on here, these are all different. I should get four signals in the, in the NMR. So it's probably going to be a little bit messy. Okay. So I can probably eliminate this one. Uh, finally, this doesn't tell me too much. This tells me that I have a CH3, a CH2, and a CH2 most likely. They're not really far downfield. I don't expect this is, is bonded to an oxygen. We'll take a look when we look at the chemical shift tables. I would expect if it was bonded to an oxygen, if it was a CH2 bonded to an oxygen, it should be out past three no matter what it is. So right away, I can kind of eliminate, I've eliminated two, I've eliminated four. I'm now leaning towards eliminating number one. Uh, so already I have an answer without even looking at my chemical shift tables yet. But let's take a look, chemical shift tables. So uh, how do we get uh, chemical shift tables? best thing to do is go to Google, and I have Google in my HNMR chemical shifts, and then I'm going to click on images. I use this a lot. Oh, I actually don't like this because I did a different search, and I found a table. Oh, no, it's right here. Sorry. There's a bunch of different tables, and you should probably, before the test, get used to some tables. I happen to like these tables when I took a look and when I go down. And why do I look like these tables? Well, it gives me a little bit, but it gives me a little bit more information here. So let's go back and see the two choices that I'm waffling between. Uh, I'm waffling between this one, which has an aldehyde on the group and, an, and the propoxy group down here. And this one, which has a carboxylic acid and just a propyl group down here, okay? The propyl group is connected to an aromatic. So what do I want to look at? Well, there's a couple of things. I want to look and see where I expect an ether to come from in terms of the hydrogens on the carbon next to the ether oxygen. And I also want to look at an aldehyde. So let's go back over here. Uh, and we want to take a look. There's an ester. No, that's not quite what I want. 
Oh, there's esters. Oh, wow, they're way out there. Uh, do I have ethers? I don't have ethers in this one. Oh, I do. Oh, yes, I do. Right there. There's an ether, and the CHs on an ether are expected to be around 3.2 to 3.8. Uh, I'm not out past 3, okay? So probably it's not this. Uh, it's probably this. And I don't know if I can find on here metal ring, but I do know there's my aromatics, right? That, that was what we looked at. Oh, here we go. Here's the other thing. Look at where aldehydes come, somewhere between 10 and 9, and carboxylic acid somewhere between 12 and about 10 and a half. Uh, and we have an 11. So we have a carboxylic acid. So once we get there, we have a carboxylic acid and we have a pair substituted ring. There we go. It's three. And it's the only choice we could have had. Let's take a look at another one that you could have had. So this one, okay, so we have a lot of shifts here. What jumps out at me here? What jumps out at me? What jumps out at me is six and four. I can't have a CH6 and I can't have a CH4. The only CH4 I can have would be methane, and that would be a very simple spectrum. So I have six and four. What if I had two equivalent ethyl groups? What do I expect from an ethyl group? I expect a triplet and a quartet. Okay, so this is very definitely a quartet, and the splitting again doesn't look so great here, but that could be a triplet. Uh, the fact that I have two ethyl groups and they're identical gives me some information. I have to look, there's an ethyl group, okay, and look at that. There's an ether carbon. That CH2 group comes out past 3 at about 3.4, so that's, we're, we're already good with that, okay. Uh, I have two that have equivalent ether groups, uh, and they're both ethyl groups, and there's some symmetry. Now, over here, I have two ethyl groups bonded to oxygen, but there's no s symmetry, so these would, I would expect to be a little bit different, and I would not expect to have uh, them overlap exactly, so I would, accept, I would expect some mess. So I don't think it's that one. What other information can we get? between these two. All we have to do now, uh, we've eliminated this one because this has a propoxy group on it. This would be a triplet, this would be a triplet, and this would be uh, at least a sextet, and I don't even have anything like that, okay? And I would expect to see uh, integrations for six, four, and four, but I only see integrations for six and four, so I can eliminate that one. I'm pretty sure I can eliminate that one. What else can we see? Okay, uh, what do we have here? We have a CH group, and next to it is an oxygen, an oxygen, and a carbon with no hydrogens. So this CH group would be a singlet. And if I look up here, I don't see any singlets. What do we expect from this one? Well, here we have a CH group. Same thing, it's bond to an oxygen, an oxygen, so there's nothing splitting over here. And it has a CH2 next to it. So this CH group, I would expect to be a triplet. It's bonded. It's an ether. In fact, uh, it's an acetal. There's, there's two oxygens bonded to it. So I expect it to be out pretty far. And look at this. There's something way out here. 4.2 integrates for one, and it's a triplet. Okay? So right away, I've, I've eliminated everything, and I know that this is the correct choice. Because this would have a singlet, and there are no singlets. Uh, this would have a singlet. There are no singlets as well. We would expect to see those propoxy groups up there that are equivalent. That's not there. And finally, this one. This would be a triplet. Uh, this would probably be the one that, that I might mistake the most. And there, if I had to pick between this one and this one, I'm going to pick this one because these ethyl groups are equivalent and we expect to see complete overlap. These ones are not equivalent, so we expect it to be messy. Let's take a look at our final uh, problem, okay? A couple of things jump out at me. This one, uh, maybe we feel a little bit 
ripped off because we don't have the integration numbers. We, we have to get a ruler and measure these. But I can, just by eye, I can see that this is my smallest peak. It looks to be, my smallest integration, sorry, looks to be about the half the size of these integrations. So these integrations are twice as much as this one. If, if this is one, this would be two, this would be two, and look at that. That together integrates for four, and this one looks to be a little bit bigger, so that must integrate for five. As well, that's in the aromatic region. So my first thoughts are, uh, I have an aromatic ring. Oh, they all have aromatic rings. There's five of them, so I have a monosubstituted aromatic ring. Oh, they're all monosubstituted aromatic rings. But that's okay, because now I know what those signals are from. Okay, I have something at 12. Let's go back. What do we expect to see at 12? Nothing out there except carboxylic acids. Uh, and in fact, even if we had much more extensive tables, what we find is that the carboxylic acids are out there. So pretty sure I have a carboxylic acid. Uh, what else do we have? Well, we have probably two CH2 groups that are next to each other because these look like very skinny multiplets. It's hard to tell, uh, but they're probably triplets. They're probably not worse than triplets. And it doesn't matter. We know we have a carboxylic acid. Then when we look down here, now all of a sudden it's easy. There's only one carboxylic acid. So it must be two. The next one we did, I'm going to go back uh, and take a look. The other one that everybody got, this one, Was 15. Okay, so let's take a look at 15. 15 gave us one spectrum. Uh, what structure is most consistent with the HNMR below? Red numbers are the integrations. Oh, this is really mean because I didn't give a molecular formula for anything. But I don't have. Anything out in the aromatic region, if, if I do, Dr. Banks was really mean because he didn't show it. So I'm going to assume he showed me the whole spectrum. Okay. I have a triplet that integrates for three, a triplet that integrates for two, a quad quartet that integrates for two. I like seeing the quartet and the triplet because that tells me that maybe I have an ethyl group. Okay. And something that integrates for two. So I have a CH3. CH2, a CH2, a CH2, and a CH2. A couple of things that jump out at me. I probably have a methyl group. I have a singlet, okay, that integrates for two. So let's take a look down here uh, at our molecules. The other thing that strikes me is I don't have two CH3 groups. So I don't have the terminal of my molecule. It's probably a linear molecule. I don't have two CH3 groups. I only have one CH3 group. There's two CH3 groups. Can't be that one. This one only has one CH3 group. Might be that one. This one has two CH3 groups that are different. Okay. Um, can't be that one. This one has two CH3 groups that are different. Can't be that one. This one has two CH3 groups that are different. Can't be that one. All of a sudden, I've eliminated every possibility but this one. Okay, so I'm pretty sure this is the case. Let's take a look and see if the splitting is correct. There's an ethyl group, so I expect this to be a triplet that integrates for a three. I have a triplet that integrates for a three. Uh, this looks to be a quartet that should integrate for two. There's a quartet that integrates for two. This is a CH2. The only thing is another CH2 next to it. Now, these are slightly different. Uh, oops, sorry. I want to go down here. Oh, look at this. There's my ethyl group. Got my ethyl group. I forgot which one I was looking at. Here we have a CH2 group. What happens to it? On the carbon next to it, there's no hydrogens because this carbon has a chlorine bonded to it, a chlorine bonded to it. The carbon that we're investigating now, which has a CH2 group, and another, there's no hydrogens on it. So we expect this to be a singlet that integrates for two. Look at that. There's our singlet that integrates for two. Okay. And
And finally, we have two CH2 groups uh, that are going to integrate for, they're going to integrate for two, their CH2 groups, and they're going to be, both of them are going to be triplets. Those are our other CH2 groups that are the triplets. And we do expect one of them to be out fairly far because it has an electronegative chlorine bond with it. Uh, so there we go. It can only be this one. Okay. Now, later in the exam, you got another uh, spectrum. It looked a lot like this. I got the spectra from the same place. Uh, and there's a big hint here. This happens a lot in exams. The answers to that question, which was in the written portion, are in here for the other selections. Let's stop and I'll do the next video.